I want to talk about some potential problems you may have when you transfer or move blend files that are referencing external information such as texture files. What can happen if you move files around is basically this external information with its own file path and file name will be lost. It will be kind of broken or obscured and Blender can't find it without help. So if that's happening, if you're opening up blend files and your textures are gone, um, go ahead and stick with me and we're going to talk about ways we can prevent that. First, I want to demonstrate the problem. So our blend file has its own path and the images have their own path. So I'm going to move that blend file. I'm going to close this. You can save it. That's fine. And let's copy this. And let's just make a new folder and call it moved. Okay, let's pretend we sent it somewhere and we're on a different computer now, or we moved it to a different hard drive or flash drive. So I'm going to paste that and let's go ahead and open this. And we'll see that immediately Blender's default way of letting us know there are missing textures is by making everything pink. Um, and with node preview on, we can see that file not found is the error we're getting for each image texture. So how can we get these back? Let's go to our viewport mode and go to image editor. And let's select one of these. Let's select our diffuse. And we can see nothing is showing up. So if I go to image replace, I'm going to go and find where our textures originally were. It's important to know where they were so you can go back and hunt them down. And I'm going to replace that. And we can see our image pops up here in the image editor. And it might take a moment to show up here. Now it's plugged into our material. If we go back to the 3D viewport, we can see there it is, it's back. Our other textures, however, are not back. So we could use the same method, image editor, select the texture we're trying to find, go to image replace. But if we're doing that with a lot of files, or if we have a lot of different materials with a lot of different textures, that could be pretty cumbersome. So let's go to File, External Data, Find Missing Files. And now we're going to go navigate and find that folder where these files are kept. So we don't select anything individually. We are then going to go to Find Missing Files. Okay, and it did give me an error that it couldn't find this 4k.exr. Um, file and what that is that's our HDRI that we're using to color our scene but it's not super important right now so it took a moment but Blender did load back our normal map and we should see over here yes okay our specular our roughness and our normal showed back up and we can see them in the image editor viewport again if we go back to 3d viewport okay now we've got our roughness and our normal maps on there so if we save this, we haven't really changed anything. We've just pointed it to the same texture files that are somewhere else. So there's something Blender can do to help us called packing. If I go to File, External Data, Pack All into Blend. Okay, what that's going to do is it's going to store these together. So before we do that, I want to look at this file. Just look at how big it is. Right now, it's about 1,000 kilobytes. That's 1.24 megabytes. Okay, super. Let's just remember that arbitrary number. So now we're going to go to external data, pack all into blend file. We got an error again that that HDR wasn't able to be found, but that it's okay right now. So let's go to file, save. Let's flip back to Windows Explorer and we can see that file size has jumped up from about one megabyte to 34 megabytes. That's a big change. So what's happened is Blender is now storing these texture files inside of this project. You can always think of Blender files as project files, not just pure geometry, but bunch of information and settings and modifiers and all kinds of things. So let's test this now. You can save it again. Let's move this. I'm going to copy. And let's say move yet again and paste it. And open that up and let's see if it worked. OK, already I can see that um, in the viewport my textures have connected um, and we can see them over here in the shader viewport as well. Now we get a different icon here. We get this kind of these double folders and it says unpack item packed file click to unpack. If we click on that it's going to give us some options and what this is saying is now that these things are stored in Blender 
how do we get them out? And that is the question, because if it's time to deliver our 3D models for maybe another software, such as Maya or 3DS Max or Unreal Engine or Unity, we're going to need those texture files to come in separately because blend files aren't recognizable by those softwares. So we're going to have to unpack this now that we've sent it to whatever collaborator or client and it's come to a certain point or they've sent it to us and we've got this packed blend file. We got to get these textures out of it somehow. So I'm going to go to file, external data, and right underneath pack all is unpack all. And again, it's going to give us some options. We can use files in current directory. That's going to look for any of these packed files that are currently in the same folder as the blend file. And if there aren't any, it will create them. Um, I really would rather write them to the current directory because I know there aren't any right now. Um, you can also write and potentially overwrite existing files. Um, you can also remove the pack. So I'm going to write files to current directory. Okay, let's flip back over to Windows Explorer and we can see Blender went ahead and made a textures folder for us. Isn't that nice? And all of our pictures, all of our image textures are inside of that folder. Wonderful. Now our Blender file is still about 35 megabytes. We don't need it to have all that stuff in there anymore. So our blend file is still showing about 35 megabytes. So let's see if we save this now. Okay, we can see our blend files back down to about a little over a megabyte. Okay, so now if we save our FBX, we're ready to send these things. So let's say we want to send this to a collaborator or a client. We can select our texture folder, our blend file, and our FBX. We can right click on them in Windows and go to send to compressed or zipped folder. And what this is going to do is when we send this, it's going to include the textures, the Blender file, and the FBX. And if we were to open this Blender file, even if it's on a different computer now, because the relationship between where these textures are and this Blend file haven't changed. Okay, you can have files and files and files and files that are like lots of layers removed from each other, your textures and your blend file, but that relationship has to stay the same. That kind of web of connection has to stay the same. Um, keeping them, you know, side by side is a good way to ensure that that doesn't get broken. And sending a zip file is an even better way when you're transferring this stuff around, especially, you know, using the cloud, Dropbox, uh, Google Drive, we transfer whatever, that those things will stay together. So I hope you have a better idea now of what to expect if you move a Blender file without the textures along with it and how to prevent that and some good habits in just storing your Blend file with your textures as neighbors.